Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to do our review of the Metro X. So this has been a long time coming, obviously, there have been a lot of comments and questions and concerns, rightfully so, from you all that have backed the Kickstarter campaign and are worried about what's going to happen and should you pull your money out. So in this video, it's going to be kind of long, probably 30 minutes, I don't really know, but I'm going to try to talk about everything. I'll let you know what's been going on, why you haven't seen reviews, what you should expect from the scanner, what kind of system requirements there are, all of those things, okay? So first things first, we are an affiliate channel. With an affiliate channel, we don't get paid to do these videos, but we do get a scanner to play with. Um, in most cases, when we do affiliate videos, we keep the scanner. Uh, that's, that's the case with RevelPoint. They send us a scanner to have and then that's sort of fulfilling our requirements of providing content. Most of the time, that process really only takes about you know, four or five hours of using a scanner to get a good idea of how it works on different types of objects, different surfaces, and so on, and then we can make a video. With the Metro X, I've been using this thing pretty much daily since I got it, and with that, we did our, you know, we did our initial unboxing video, which you all saw, and we expected to do the review video in just a couple of days, to have it out within a week. Well, what ended up happening is that the, the software requirements were a bit outside of my current computers, my systems. My, my laptop is, the old laptop is a 7th gen i7, which was 2017, 2018, a pretty high horsepower CAD laptop. My desktop is just a couple years old at this point, but it's a 10th gen i7. And the base requirements were 13th gen i7 with the ideal being a, an i9 processor. Uh, you know, so with that said, my initial testing I thought was related to some system issues. So I ordered a brand new laptop. Um, it's a 13th gen i7 laptop with an RTX 3500 graphics card. And basically, you know, dove in. That's $3,500, $4,000 for the base level system. Uh, you know, so I got that in, I started doing some testing so that I could do the review video, and I still had some, some problems with the way everything was working. Now, this channel is not a beta tester for RevoPoint, but we began providing feedback, like, this is what I'm seeing, this is what's working, this is what's not working. So, day or two goes by, a new beta version of RevoScan is sent out, continue to play around with it, and provide feedback. So... In that entire time, there, you know, there were hopes of being able to do those review videos quickly. But again, there were just little things that kept popping up that were going to show the scanner in a very negative light, even though you know, it's still beta software. It's still not public release. And that's something that we need to understand. RevoPoint has been putting a lot of effort into their RevoScan software. I'll put a link in the description to a recent video that they talk about all of the updates. But things like adding the smoothing brush are there. They've reduced the point fusion value on some scanners. So like the Mini 2, the Metro X, you can fuse points up to 0 0.05 millimeters. Other scanners like the Pop series, it's 0.1 millimeters. But basically these, these things let you preserve more detail. Um, they've improved performance, they've added things like global marker tracking and IR optical zoom to a lot of the scanners. And all of these things are sort of um, in public versions of the software. But a lot of the stuff that's going on with the Metro X, because it's not just a structured light scanner, it's a laser scanner, requires a little bit more uh, development. So it was working when they sent it out, but again, I wasn't very happy with the performance. I upgraded my laptop and I, I still felt like it wasn't gonna really show it in a good light. So we went into this cycle of testing, providing feedback, sending scan data, and, and, and getting new versions. And you know, just to give you a simple example, uh, when you're using laser scanning, you have to use marker dots. And some of the default marker dots for things like the range and pop series or the Morocco in far mode are these large five millimeter marker dots. Using the small marker dots is really more beneficial when laser scanning because oftentimes you're trying to pick up smaller details. Well, the marker algorithm that's built into RevoScan still assumed that the marker dots were all the larger ones. So when you put them on smaller objects in, in areas close to corners, what you ended up seeing is those corners would get destroyed by the algorithm. 
Um, you know, so obviously this is a problem. It doesn't really show it in a good light. And these are things that they're working on. Um, in addition to that, the smoothing brush was pretty aggressive in some areas around corners. And, and so, you know, these are all things that are getting worked on and updated. The most recent version of the beta software that I'm using has addressed pretty much all of my concerns and questions that I've been passing back to RevoPoint, but it's still in development. So that's something to keep in mind as a Kickstarter backer. You have to look at the history of how RevoPoint has done Kickstarter campaigns, how quickly they've been updating their software, and use that in making your decision on, on whether or not you feel confident that, that this is going to be where you expect it to be when it comes time to ship them out. Now, what RevoPoint has told me is that they are, you know, 100% backing and behind the efforts on this scanner. Um, they, they have assured me that when these things ship out in, I think, December, that the software will be 100% ready. But keep in mind that my sort of review of this is still very much using beta software. So there are gonna be little bugs, there are gonna be things that need to be improved. But as I mentioned, RevoScan has been updated quite a bit this year. And some of those things I mentioned, like uh, frame rate increases, the fusion settings dropping, there are tons of graphics and performance settings that they've changed. The um, scan alignment has gotten improvements as well. You have the ability to stop and cancel processes that are going. So if you decided to fuse your scan at 0 0.05 millimeters and it's taking a long time, you can hit the cancel button and then you can redo it at 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever. So they are working actively on that, not just for the Metro X, but for all scanners, but it is very much beta at this point. So just keep that in mind. Um, the system requirements are another big thing that people really should consider here. So as I mentioned, this laptop, at least for me, was $3,500 from Dell directly. And that's not to say that you can't get these systems cheaper. Uh, when I looked, there were some other places that had them for around $2,000. I think b &H Photo was one of them. But I just, in the timeline that I had to get, uh, you know, to get something set up, I just couldn't wait for um, some of those other suppliers. There are also some system settings for things like MacOS, but um, I, I don't really know those off the top of my head. So if you are on the Mac operating system, if you are using uh, you know, those computers, then definitely check in to see what the specs are for your system and whether or not it meets these requirements. I did testing on my older 7th gen i7 and my 10th gen i7 desktop. Both have plenty of RAM. The processor speed is fine. The graphics cards are, are good graphics cards for CAD applications. And in full field mode and turntable mode, they were fine. They were a little bit slower than this system, but they still captured. Uh, when I say slower, I'm talking about, you know, five to eight frames per second slower, but it was still working. On laser mode, absolutely not. Um, they, they kind of choked when they were doing the global marker tracking, just capturing the markers. It just wasn't able to do it. The laser scanning, when I tried it on the older laptop, which I think is 2017, 2018, somewhere around there, I mean, it was trying to capture it two or three frames a second. It just was not working. Um, so the architecture of the newer i7 chip and the, and the i9, which is their suggested chip, is different enough that the older systems just really aren't going to work very well for laser scanning. Uh, so that is a, a big consideration that you need to understand. And oftentimes we get in this sort of mindset like, oh, I've got a good gaming computer, I've got a good so-and-so, and it'll work. Um, but at least from my initial testing and until they do a little bit more optimization, it's struggled on those older systems. So their minimum spec of a 13th Gen i7 is probably where you should be looking if you are serious about using the laser scanning modes on this, or you're gonna have to gamble and hope that the optimization of the software gets a bit better. Um, now, they did tell me that they've been working to optimize it for the 10th gen i7, but uh, again, in my testing on that, I, I wasn't really pleased with the performance of it, and it works so much better on this 13th gen i7. And again, you know, processor speed, amount of RAM, graphics card, um, this one has an RTX 3500. My desktop has a, an RTX 4000. So it's, it's not like they're wildly different. Um, it's just the older architecture of the chip itself. So keep that in mind. That is a cost associated with being able to run this.
So with all that said, let's talk about the scanner. Um, because now we understand what happened, why you haven't seen a review, and you understand hopefully about the system requirements, because that's a big thing. So now the scanner itself. Uh, so there are four modes. We've got our turntable mode, which is the only one that lets you currently capture RGB data. So if you are looking at color capture, it has to be a turntable mode. Uh, we've got full field mode, which is structured light, and that is projecting, I think, 62 lines. Then we've got parallel line laser mode, and we've got cross line laser mode. So those four modes represent a couple of different things here. So first things first, turntable mode uses full field in single shot mode. So what that means is the turntable is actually linked to the software. Uh, you can tell it how many degrees you want it to turn. You can tell it if you want it to tilt. And it can go around, I think, at least five or six times. So you have the option to configure all that. But it is only using full field mode. Now, in my testing, I was actually really happy with the detail that full field mode picked up. I did some testing on some little blocks. So, uh, you know, I've got this little block here which has some text on it, and I've got specific sizes uh, that I measured, and it was accurate uh, out to three decimal places. So, I think it was 0 0.002 inches off when I measured it with calipers versus measuring the scan itself. So I was really happy with the, the precision and the accuracy of full field mode, at least in turntable mode. When we're talking about the differences between the perceived precision and accuracy of a laser scanner or laser scan mode versus the full field mode, we have to really think about the inconsistency of the human hand. So. When we're doing the laser scanning mode, which I'll talk about more in just a second, we're using the global marker tracking. This is the best way it works currently. So you're pre-capturing all the markers, and then you go in and capture the points. And this means that RevoScan has this whole sort of ecosystem, this scene of where all these points are. So you can jump all over the place, you can move around quickly or slowly, and you don't really have any tracking issues. I haven't had any tracking issues as long as it can see at least four or five markers in view at all time. With the full field mode, I found at least currently that it doesn't really like the global tracking as much as it does feature tracking. It works much better with feature tracking. When we're using our hand and we have feature tracking, the software is really looking at the point cloud, where the points are in space, and it's trying to align you know, additional frames in addition to using its onboard IMU. So there is a difference in the way the tracking works and that, I believe, leads to some of the inconsistencies or, or degradation of performance and accuracy that you would see in full field mode. I think that the way that it actually physically works, it's not any more or less precise or accurate than the laser scanning mode. It just happens to be that if you're using it in handheld mode, that the human error from moving it around and, and jumping around, I think that's where we're going to see the difference. So I've been really happy with full field mode. It doesn't work great on shiny black objects. Um, it does work wonderful with scan sprayed objects, and it does work great on other, uh, you know, other objects. So I was able to capture um, this part, which is machined aluminum, and it's got a clear anodized finish, and it picked this up just fine. Um, I did try to scan some other things that were shinier, and I wasn't able to really do so very well. So there is a limit to what you can scan in full field mode, and I would certainly recommend scan spray as just something you have around because it makes a big difference. The sprocket, I was able to scan as a shiny object in laser mode, but it was much quicker and more accurate in full field mode on the turntable with scan spray. So, you know, it's basically a one click operation when you're using the turntable. You just set it up and you click and it does it all for you in single shot mode, flip it over and then align those two scans. Um, you know, so that's something big to keep in mind. When we think about performance, we also need to think about the fact that when we're using a structured light scanner, what we're doing is we're actually projecting out and then we're bringing all the data in that area back in through the depth cameras. So full field mode is capturing millions of points every second. When we're thinking about laser scanning, the frame rate capture is higher. So I'm seeing 45 frames per second on this system. On the official Revo points videos, they're seeing 60, at least on their screenshots and they're using an i9 system, so I would assume that is, is going to be the difference there. But 
you're only bringing data back where the laser lines are. So if you're on the cross lines, you're, pick, you're bringing more data back. If you're on the parallel lines, you've only got seven thin laser lines that are sending that data back to the depth cameras. And so what that means is every second, even though you're capturing more frames a second, you're really only bringing 700, 800,000 points back in. And with the, the full field mode, you're dealing with structured light, you're bringing millions of points back. So the, the data capture feels a lot quicker on full field mode than it does on laser mode. And that's one big question I'm, I'm seeing is people are saying, well, shouldn't the laser mode just be a lot faster? Well, it's capturing more frames, but it's not really capturing more data. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is that the laser modes require you to have marker dots. And so Revopoint has a marker kit where you get these sort of pyramids, you get these domes, um, you get these sticks that thread into the turntable, 100% buy that. If you don't have that, you're gonna be using tons and tons of marker dots. Make sure that you do consider that. If I didn't have those, I would have just been blowing through marker dots constantly. So keep that in mind that that is a big help. But the performance of the laser scanning is gonna be something that gets better and better. It's improved greatly since I started using this scanner and uh, Revopoint has told me that they're committed to making sure that by December, that everything is gonna work 100% as promised, the performance is gonna be good. But at, at this current time, they're still tweaking settings, they're still making adjustments. So for example, we did a short video where I scanned this triple clamp in like 30 seconds, I did the top of it, had a shiny sprocket sitting on it and this bar clamp was mounted to it. So it is capturing this uh, and that, that wasn't fake, that was a real video in you know, 30, 40 seconds. But there's something that you also need to consider or keep in mind that with the laser scanning, you have the exposure value of the depth cameras, but you also have the intensity of the lasers. And the intensity of the lasers, in addition to the exposure of the depth cameras, can very easily introduce noise above your shiny parts. Um, and, and again, this is something that Revopoint is actively tweaking and working on. And each time that they send me an updated version of RevoScan, it does improve. All right, so we're doing a quick jump. Um, obviously, change of clothes, it's the next day. We recorded our review video yesterday, sent it to RevoPoint, had them review it, and they said, well, what you said about scanning black shiny objects isn't strictly true because here's a new version of RevoScan for you. Uh, so this morning, well, about noon today, I got a new version of RevoScan. So we're trying to sort of shoehorn this into the original video. Uh, but essentially what happened is they're making improvements and adjustments to the software, uh, specifically around capturing shiny objects and black objects. Now, I think it's important to note that this black anodized triple clamp and, and the bottom one that I have here, these are kind of worst case scenarios. And simply because the black objects, the at least in terms of the scanning modes, are things that are going to be absorbing the light, the laser lines and, and the full field mode and, and so on. So we're talking about things like this gas cap, which are more of like a flat black. Those are things that it scans perfectly fine right now, whether it's in full field mode or if it's in laser mode, um, it's able to scan those. You put it in that sort of black object mode and it will adjust some of the algorithm, I think, and it adjusts your exposure values and, and the laser brightness values. For shiny objects, which we've done a few shiny objects, um, we are able to capture that. And the shiny black object, again, is kind of like the worst case. And, and that's simply just based on the fact that the way that the black color behaves in relation to the full field, the, the sort of structured light projector and the lasers, in addition to the shininess of it, makes it have a lot of noise in the scan. And what I mean by noise is if we think about how this works, we are projecting either that structured light or we're projecting these laser lines and the depth cameras are reading that data and pulling or building those points in 3D based on that data. Now with full field, what we're doing is we're projecting out and we're taking all that information back in per frame. With the lasers, we're, we're only bringing it back where the laser lines are. So it does take more time when we're scanning objects with laser line. And it's important to note that the laser intensity, as well as the depth camera exposure, has 
an impact that has implications on the data that's coming back. So what you're going to find out is that with shiny objects, especially black shiny objects, that you end up getting these points sort of floating around in space around your object. In most cases, the isolation detection and overlap detection clear all that stuff out without you really having to do anything. But for me, if I'm trying to get an accurate scan, then I typically would go with a scan spray. So this triple clamp is a great example. If I really wanted good clean data off of this, I would put scan spray on it. Really all I'm doing is I'm using it to test what works and what doesn't work on this thing. So that's just something that you have to keep in mind. The scanner will scan shiny objects. It will scan black objects just fine. It will scan shiny black objects. But you have to think about, one, your, the amount of time that it takes for you to do that, two, the accuracy of the data that you're getting back, because the accuracy of a shiny black object versus something that has scan spray on it is likely going to be different, just simply based on the noise. It, it has to have some sort of impact on the accuracy of that data. So just keep all those factors in mind. And as I mentioned, as we, we sort of alluded to at the beginning of this video, RevoScan is updating very rapidly. So we're working on beta versions of the software. Today, we got that new version just you know an hour or so ago and a new version on Friday and a new version on Wednesday last week and a new version on Monday last week. So they are rapidly making improvements. And I do think that that's something that we should keep in mind when we're trying to decide whether or not we want to back this. So let's hop back to the original video. All right, so we're not quite hopping back to the original video just yet. So today is Wednesday, which is the day this video should go live. Uh, and uh, again, a new version of RevoScan was released that should address some of the things I was just talking about with noise and reflection. So there are a couple things that I want to add into this video, but obviously uh, every time there's an update, we can't pause because the, the clock is ticking on the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, this is already, you know, this has been going on several days. My original review was filmed, um, you know, last Thursday, and there were some technical issues there on my end, but uh, we, we can't delay it anymore. So we're going to have to put this video out. But uh, two things that I want to address about the clip you just saw. So first, the noise that's being introduced on the black shiny part. Part of that is my fault. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm using the magic mat as sort of a, a way to have a, a base that has marker dots on it. And in talking with Revopoint, their uh, R&D, their technical side said, don't use a magic mat. That's why it doesn't come in the kit for the Metro X, it comes in the kit for things like the, like the Mini. But the reason that you don't want to use that is because the marker dots are not precise enough and it messes with the tracking algorithm when you're laser scanning. So using it in global marker tracking and sort of building that out, even if I'm not touching the mat or the mat doesn't get bumped, those targets are not truly flat because they, you know, they curve on the mat or they're just in different positions that it's not accurate enough for laser scanning. So that's, they told me that that's going to introduce some of the noise that I'm seeing in some of my scans. The second thing is, again, today, Wednesday, there is another version of RevoScan. So there was a version yesterday, which again, d we delayed the video and talked about some of the updates about black shiny objects and how it's capturing it better. And they're, you know, they're really working hard and trying to address this. I don't know if I'm the only one that's had this problem or if uh, some of the beta testers are, are having issues. Um, I have seen sample scans from other testers that have been perfectly fine. I think a lot of them are more of the sort of flat black plastic type parts and not shiny anodized parts, but um, RevoPoint has been sending me images of things that they're scanning and asking how close it is to the thing that I'm scanning and seeing the problem. So they're they're actively working on this. There is, an, there is a new version of the beta RevoScan that they're going to send out today. And they asked if I would wait to finish this video until then, and I just can't. You know, the, the, the time involved in testing these and then re-recording another clip and, and doing all that, um, unfortunately, we just don't have the time. The Kickstarter campaign is about to end in a day, and, and I just personally just don't have more time that I can dedicate to this. So 
with that said, I just I wanted to come back on and at least clarify that uh, the magic mat that I was using and probably some of the shots that you saw is not recommended. They actually told me not to use it. So that's going to introduce some problems. And second is there's another version of RevoScan that they're working on actively trying to address some of this noise. Now, I will say that the scan on the screen, if we look at the raw data, we can see all the noise in this raw data above the part. Again, some of that is coming from the magic mat. This is not a shiny black part. So um, I believe that the magic mat is contributing a lot to this. But the fused version of that, it all I basically all I did is I went through the fusion process and isolation, which the isolation detection, there was only a little piece of the magic mat left. All of those extra points sort of um, went away and were cleaned up pretty quickly and easily without me doing anything. I didn't manually select anything. I just you know clicked fusion and I clicked isolation detection um, and it was done. So they are actively working on that. We just can't wait a couple hours to get a new version of the software and test it and then uh, you know, film another clip for you and patch it into this video. But hopefully that helps and gives you, again, just a little bit more insight onto how rapidly they are making tweaks and updates to the software in the testing process. And, and again, this channel, we're not a beta tester. That's not really part of what we kind of signed up to do. So I will continue to test it. Um, and we'll continue to answer questions even after the Kickstarter has closed because the units won't be out yet and try to give you updates on how the software is evolving and changing. We still have other content to do with the Morocco Plus and we will you know, keep playing around with this and try to see you know, how it improves over the next month and answer those questions for you. But now let's go ahead and hop back into the original video. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, and I've only got this block of time where I can give you feedback on it. But from the first time I used it to now, there have been big improvements on how the software works, how the scanner works. I still do think that probably one of the bigger selling points of this scanner is the full field mode, how fast it is and how accurate it is, um, and the turntable itself. So having the turntable linked that can tilt in two directions and, and you know can move and do a single shot mode um, these two things alone, I think, make this a good scanner. Uh, and then the laser scanning, I think, is still being developed and it works, but it's not quite as good as full field mode, in my personal opinion, right now. So with all that said, that's a lot to digest. Is the scanner worth it for you to support it on Kickstarter? It's not, unfortunately, it's not something I can tell you. You have to make that decision for yourself. And hopefully based on the information that we have here that maybe will give you a bit more um, information or, or comfort level. Um, I think that if this scanner wasn't touted as a you know, Metro X laser scanner, if it was just the Metro X scanner and it happened to have laser and full field mode, um, I think that would be a little bit of a different story, but I think most people are really expecting it to be a, you know, a laser only scanner. Now, if you look at other scanners, and I, I haven't reviewed the, the Raptor X, and I've gotten a lot of qu questions on that, but if you look at those and you see a lot of the reviews, a lot of times they're using it in NIR or near infrared mode and not actually in laser scan mode. Um, you know, so these are things to consider too. Like, what is what does the competition look like? What do other scanners in the market segment do currently? Uh, and what does this scanner do for you? So keep all that in mind. I'll do my best to answer questions. We will continue to use the scanner and play around with it as we get updates to RevoScan. Um, again, those are coming pretty frequently and we've spent a lot of time, probably done 100, 150 scans with this thing so far. So um, it's a lot of time and effort to, to do this. So we just wanted to make sure that at least there was something out there for you to hopefully get some more information on. So if you have any more questions, please leave them below. If you wanna see more content like this or uh, if you have suggestions on content, leave that as well. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.